This is the newest addition to my list of ever-growing projects. It's a 1964 Ford Falcon Futura. I actually uh, traded my 2003 GMC Sierra for this car. So now I do not have a reliable vehicle to drive anymore. <laughs> Just fine, you know. Where's the fun at if you can't drive something that overheats every once in a while? Or tells you you have gas and you run out of gas. You know, fun things like that. <laughs> but I'm sure some of you will wonder, these rims are actually off of a 2010 Mustang. And they do fit just fine. On the back, it's got one inch spacers because the offset is very heavy on these rims. And on the front, I've got inch and a half spacers. This thing isn't perfect. It's had some dents and dings. There's a dent in there. The owner I got it from said it's been there since his grandfather owned it in 1987. And then one dent on the roof. Interior's pretty well shot. Got a bunch of stuff in there, but it's kind of neat. He made his own uh, little steering wheel cover out of paracord, which is pretty sweet. It's actually extremely comfortable. And then I've done a little bit of work to it. Not much. Uh, funds have been pretty tight, but a little bitty switch panel may change in the future, depending on uh, what direction I go with it. But the dash is in great shape. I love it. This is the best dash I've had in an old car, kind of because it's metal, but <laughs> that helps. But. One thing that is nice to do on a car like this is add a little bit of your own electrical. So the only source you can get 12 volt uh, ignition power is straight off the ignition switch because there's very minimal amounts of electrical in this car. So I spliced off of that to run this relay that runs a terminal strip. So now anytime I wanted to add an accessory or whatever, I just throw an eyelet on a wire and stick it on there. I'll probably add some caps or something like that to keep it from you know shorten out if you ever touch anything to it but yeah interiors definitely got a lot of work but these door panels and stuff are expensive so it's probably gonna be a while engine bay i've done a little bit so far uh, i might have some fun back so basically all i've done is Added a relay, and that's my uh, power for that relay inside the car. Just run it along the back, and then in through a grommet, like you should always do. Lots of oil leaks covered, but it's a 260 with three-speed column shift. It's very fun to drive. And the radiator leaked. He actually had two of them. He tried to solder it, seal it back up, but it didn't hold. So, if you buy one of these, it's actually a hundred bucks off eBay for this aluminum radiator. It's quite thick, cools really well. But this thing still has the factory generator, as far as I can tell, and it functions fine. I was really curious if it was going to handle it, but it runs an electric fan. And it functions, as far as I know. I haven't measured voltage with everything kicked on, but... Because they're only supposed to put out, like, 30 amps. 25, 30 amps on the regulator. But, it's been working good. But, as you can see, I had to space the radiator off the original mounts and make it a pusher fan. If you try and run a cheapy 16-inch fan on a radiator like this, in this car, it will hit the water pump. I'm sure there's probably a short water pump you could try and put on to make it fit, but then it probably wouldn't fit with the generator. It might fit with an alternator conversion and a different crank pulley, but I mean, I don't know, you're going a long ways at that point to try and fit an electric fan as a, as a normal conventional style. But I had to add the spacers because the end of the motor is really close to hitting the hood release and I really didn't want it to rub. So I had to space it off a little ways, which is fine. I mean, there is a gap there, but it seems to be cooling fine. If I run into any issues, I'll build some 
sheet metal covers to go across the top and down the sides to keep the wind from going around the radiator and keep it going through. But as you can tell, the motor is tilted off to one side. Now why is that? Well, both of the motor mounts are broken. <laughs> it is literally just sitting in here on the rubber blocks and the rubber is separated from the metal part of the mount that bolts to the motor. So needless to say, that is next. That and some exhaust because this thing has a straight pipe right now. But if you guys have any questions or you want to see anything about the car, or you want me to do anything to it specifically, let me know. I did not get any video of installing the radiator, but I mean, it's a radiator, so it's not a whole lot to it other than taking the fan on and off like three times and buying new kits to install it over and over. But this does have the original two barrel carburetor and the original top, although I did modify that door in there to keep it from uh, opening up down there because there's no pipe on it so I really don't want it to suck from the exhaust manifold all the time so I just blocked it off to where it always sucked from the front. Eventually I will put a chrome air cleaner on it probably or something but for now this is plenty of air for this thing it's not really a performance motor and the back originally actually had this size of tire but I Put a taller one on there it fits really well it's not bad i couldn't have gone much taller this is like a 26 26.3 inch tall tire but to try and get get a little bit better gas mileage that was part of the intent on the electric fan too because originally had a four bladed solid cooling fan and that is horrific for performance and for pretty much anything. I mean, you don't ever have to worry about cooling, really, as long as your radiator's full and moving fluid, but not the best for performance. That's pretty much it. Uh, I'll try and make some more videos for you guys in the future.